Phil Jackson's a racist? Say it ain't so, Uncle Phil. Say it ain't so. Let's talk about it, y'all. Middle. (laughs) Middle America. What are you people? We're Americans. (laughs) We are Americans indeed, dear listeners. Mm. I am Vin. That is. We're not left wing. We're not right wing. We're just right. I'm kind of right wing. DL Beluga is absolutely a right. Well, I'm actually slipping to more a uh, moderate position. A moderate that. position. The Tucker okay. Carlson all right. videos. All right. All right. All the Tucker Carlson videos. Good. Those good. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Scotty Pippen recently gave an interview to GQ magazine. But before we say that, please like, share, comment, and subscribe this video if you enjoy it. And you can also join our community, facebook.com backslash America Middle. We've got lively conversations. I show up there often. I also shoot videos um, on that forum that don't make it here at times. So there you go. Having said that, it is time. The big homie, Scottie Pippen, gave an interview uh, to GQ, and then he ends up on the back. (laughs) Is there anything? This is Scottie on the Dan Dan Patrick show. Mm Mm-hmm. And he is addressing a uh, specific issue that he said in the GQ mag. Here we go. The score. So you're going to be looking at a guy that's going to be playing more for triple doubles instead of trying to score 40 or 50. He's talking about LeBron there. I'll say that. Um, okay. Help me understand the GQ article where you talked about the 1994 playoff game when you refused to go back in the game and Phil set up the play for Tony Kukoc. Well, I mean, it's not much to be said. If you go back and look at when Scottie Pippen entered the Bulls and when Tony Kukoc entered the Bulls and who deserved the last shot of the game. No, no, um, no. I understand that, Scotty. I'm just going by what you... I mean, so, you know, Scotty spent all those years in Michael's shadow. Uh, yep, and then right. when Michael retired, he was having an MVP season. Scotty? Scotty Pippen was, and they were right. playing the Knicks in the, I think it was the Eastern Conference Finals, to go to the to the championship. Okay. And, uh, you know, there was a game winner that was needed, and so instead of going with Scotty, who was the best player on the team, they went with Tony Kukoc. And he's white? Tony Kukoc is, I think he's Croatian, but yeah, you would consider him white. Okay. Right? So, so Tony Kukoc, but he hit the shot. They won. Okay. So... Everybody, I mean, Scotty wouldn't even come onto the court. He wouldn't even he wouldn't even uh, play with the team after that. He didn't come on the court. He sat on the oh, bench wow. for the rest of the game. So, well, I mean, the game the game was pretty much over, right? The guy hit Tony hit the game winning three, but he made some comments, and you know, to Mark Graves' point, he quit on the team. It's just a fact. He did. Okay. Um, and so here he is recounting that. So they're asking him, "Hey, if you had to do it over again, would you have done that? You know, sat out and and abandoned your teammates." So here, here he is. Said you said you need to read between the fine lines, and then you go on to say it was a racial move to give him Tony Kukoc a ride. So oh, I mean, if you... oh my gosh, oh he think it's ridiculous as well. It was a racially motivated substitution. It, racism is losing its meaning now. <laughs> Every all the leftists say everything. If you cross the street, you're racist. If you uh, move in the elevator, you're racist. And now you can't pick a player without being called racist. And this is in a sport, too. So uh, emotional decisions should not be made in sports. A sports is about, you know, calculations, strategy, things of that nature. Emotion should be completely taken out of the picture. And now I, I'm, I'm sure no coach is going to be worrying about what player they're going to pick now. Uh, but I'm just saying this is we're on a bad track. And he's, the leftists have to use their leverage, right? Because... They already have people thinking of, you know, equating racism to one of the worst social crimes you can commit. And if they keep diluting the word racism, it's not going to have this meaning anymore. They're going to lose their power of leverage that they have currently. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you, actually. Um, and we generally don't agree on these, these types of issues. But <laughs> this, to me, is like... We recently covered somebody. I'm not going to name her, but it appears when you look at all the evidence that this young lady... She had a problem with somebody, and she made a sexual harassment claim, and mm, kind of, she basically Carol? Be, huh? Carol from no, 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 you don't, you don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying the name. The name's uh, not important. My point is, this person was in a conflict with somebody, and then she brought up 
a sec, you know, a sexual assault or whatever. Um, and and yeah. when everybody looked at all the evidence, it was clear that she was lying. And, you know, the whole yeah. um, Kavanaugh Justin situation, Millett. Kavanaugh situation, Jesse Millett. Yeah. Um, I don't put it at that level, but what he just said, but I put it right under this because that is that is a listen, Scotty. Uh, Tony Kukoc had hit two game winners already that season. Really? Yeah. See, I didn't. I don't know. I don't really follow basketball, so I wouldn't know that. But. Yeah, th- that's the thing. He had already hit. Scott, uh, he already hit two game winners. And the other thing is, Tony Kukoc was no slouch offensively. He was the best guy in the entire country of Croatia. I mean, Tony Kukoc oh. was a very, very gifted, gifted organ uh, uh, player. So, and and he played in Europe and all the rest of it. So it wasn't like he was a slouch. And but Context for is definitely needed here. I understand Scotty, right? Because if you live in the shadow of a person your whole life and you get one opportunity, you're going to be upset. I get it, Scotty. Knew that Scotty Pippen had been with the Bulls from '87, battled through the Pistons and every other team that we had to get to those three championships. Wouldn't you give Scotty Pippen one opportunity to get a last second shot without Michael Jordan? Like one year without Michael Jordan? Can I get one shot? Like I'm doing all the dirty work, but all. The- but see, it's weird to me that he doesn't see the contradiction. Michael Jordan is black. As yeah. a matter of fact, Michael Jordan is blacker than you, Scotty. <laughs> right. So black you're saying black. you're saying, oh, it's the one year that Jordan isn't there, and I'm getting from that the the implication, Scotty, is that if Jordan was there, he would have got the call, and he would have, because he's Michael Jordan. But you're not Michael Jordan. You're Scotty Pippen. And the thing about Scotty is he was he was top five on every aspect of the game. Offensively, defensively, dribbling, basketball. He was he was a he was a four out of five on everything. Wow. The problem is Tony Kukoc is a five on a very specific issue, which is a mid range jump shot. Is he now? So he has a better mid range jump shot percentage than uh, Scotty. And so they needed a jump shot, and so they went with the guy who, analytically speaking, has the best numbers. Yeah. But you, you, you then call that racism, and then you said, "Can I just have one?" Because Mike's not here, so that tells us all of this is not about the racism supposedly of it's Phil not. Jackson. This is about you never being able to forgive Phil for deny. And I understand this denying him the opportunity to have a clutch game winning shot moment like Michael Jordan did. Yeah. So on the emotional side, I get it, but bro, racist? <laughs> My man, you've been what? Phil, you played for Phil 30 years ago maybe? Why didn't you say anything? <laughs> You're saying it now? Like, I don't know. I don't know. He's wait to the political climate was right. <laughs> That I understand from the basketball standpoint, but when you say a racial move, well, why would why would Tony, who was a rookie, get the last second shot, and you put me up about? Because Tony had already hit multiple last second shots, bro. He had already done it, and he was a specialist at it. And that night he was red hot. It was the right play. That's what I mean, racial. <sighs> Like that was Scottie Pippen's team. But but Scottie Phil Pippen then, was but, but, on pace to be an MVP that year, right? Yeah. Who's talking? Okay. Right well, that's Dan Patrick. He's a sport. He's a ESPN. No, who's sports. a black guy? That's Scottie Pippen. He referred to himself as Scottie Pippen. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know who Scottie Pippen was? No, I mean I I thought <laughs> it was, but he kept, but he kept referring to himself in the third person. So. Yeah, yeah, that was a big thing that a lot of the stars used to do in the '90s. They'd refer to themselves in the third person. It was so strange, <laughs> so strange. Uh, we could. T- <laughs> we could t- oh, Without God. Michael Jordan, can I get one shot? Like I'm doing all the dirty work. But all of that I understand from the basketball standpoint. But when you say a racial move, well, why would why would Tony, who was a rookie, get the last second shot? Because as we've just said, Scotty, come on, bro. And Dan Patrick, you don't have the stats in front of him. The man, Phil said it in, in, in the segment on the Last Dance. He had said that Ku Coach had hit two game winners in that season. 
Mm-hmm. And he was red hot. Like, the only explanation... See, this this is where you have got to give the Ben Shapiro's of the world, the Tucker Carlson's of the world, you got to give them some sort of uh, concession. Because when they go, oh, everything's racist now, huh? Blah, 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 blah. Like, canceling Christmas, Christopher Columbus Day is good and right because he was an actual racist who caused a bunch of harm and we do not need to memorialize evil people but scotty you're off here bro you're, you that is not the only explanation for why he selected tony kukoc and not you scotty the job of a coach is to make sure that the team wins it's not to give you your just due the job yeah. of a coach and the job of a team is to put the team in the best possible position to win. And you clearly were not the guy, bro. Because if you were the guy, you would not have abandoned your team and sat your ass on the bench in the most important moment of the season for your team. I think they were down 3-1 or something like that. So if they lost, you know. So it, it, that's not racism, Scotty. There's a very obvious answer for why... Phil chose him over you, and I'm sorry, but you're off. And you put me out of bounds. That's what I mean, racial. Like, that was Scottie Pippen's team. But, but Scottie Phil Pippen then, was but, but, on pace to be an MVP that year, right? Your person yeah. is so weird. Okay, well, why would you put him in a position not to be successful? Why would you're wrong. He puts you in a position to be successful. You know how? Because if the team's successful, you're successful. They extended the Easter Conference Finals for another game, bro. This is like he was setting. Don't you realize when he gave Jordan the ball at the last second shot against Cleveland, he was also acting in your best interest and advancing your cause. <laughs> but th- this is the mentality of of these people. You're th- you're on a team. It's not about you, but I understand. No, none of us knows what it's like to be Scotty. I get it, and I don't have a problem with him ventilating and all that shit. But you cannot call that racism, and everybody knows I'm a lover of my people. You guys know that. Look at the last video I did, Tucker Carlson. I'm a lover of my people, man. I have no problem calling that racism. But Scotty, you're wrong here, bro. You're wrong. When you put him in a position to succeed, Michael Jordan is not there. So who's next in line for you? But have you talked to Phil about this? Because you, by saying a racial move, then you're you're calling Phil a racist. Mm-hmm. I don't got a problem with that. With what? With calling Phil Jackson a racist. Uh, I have a problem with it because Mr. Jackson has been in a pretty much black-dominated sport and played and coached literally – Four or five of the ten, literally the ten greatest basketball players of all time. I mean, you you, you got to give us something more than that, man. Like you got to give us something more than that. This guy's in a black dominated sport. He he's almost he's universally loved by the players most of the time. I, I don't understand this. I think Phil was or is. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, do you remember Phil Jackson left the Lakers, went, wrote a book on Kobe Bryant, and then came back and coached him? I mean, who would do that? Wait, 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 you wait, wait. Mean, I mean, do you remember Phil Jackson on pace to be an MVP that year, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, why would you put him in a position not to be successful? Why wouldn't you put him in a position to succeed? Michael Jordan is not there. So who's next in line for you? But have you talked to Phil about this? Because you, by saying a racial move, then you're you're calling Phil a racist. I don't got a problem with that. Do you think Phil was or is? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, do you remember Phil Jackson left the Lakers, went, wrote a book on Kobe Bryant, and then came back and coached him? I mean, who would do that? You name someone in professional sports that would do that. I don't You know? What? I well, think he tried to expose Kobe in a way that he shouldn't have. You're the head coach. And you're the guy that sits in the locker room and tells the 
players, this is a circle and everything stays within the circle because that's what team is about. But you as the head coach, open it up. And now you go out and you try to belittle at that time, probably one of the greatest players in the game. Well, it feels like he's disloyal. Uh, that That's very bizarre to me. So Dan Patrick goes, I mean, are you, you're good with calling him a racist? Are you saying Phil Jackson's a racist? And then Pippen goes, oh, of course. And then the example he brings is that he said something <laughs> negative about Kobe Bryant in a, in a book. That's the example of Phil's racism. Wouldn't Kobe know more about Phil's racism against him than you would, considering they're the ones that were the subjects in question? Kobe's never said a word about uh, Phil being a racist. And Kobe wasn't LeBron James. He wasn't an activist, but he definitely would have aired that out for sure. I mean, look at Kobe's last tweets about Trump. So, uh, and, and Kobe's an intelligent, articulate brother. He would have been able to go out there and explain the whole thing. Even like, you know, it, it's just crazy to me. And it's not like he ended his career playing for Phil. So he had the green light to do it. He never did it. He never did it. So I, I, I don't get it, man. That That's not racism. What, what's your thought process on that? Uh, it feels like he's just a red herring. He's just trying to, you know, he, he made this claim that he was a racist. And he had to, he f maybe felt like he needed to prove it, so he brought up the book. I guess I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I that's not racism. I'm sorry, bro. It's not. It's racism. very strange. I don't know if that makes him a racist. It doesn't. Well, that's your yeah way of putting it out, and I have my way. I was in the locker room with him. I was in practices with him. Uh, you're looking for him afar. Yeah, and, and look, that's why I wanted to have you on. But I go back, and Phil designed a play for Steve Kerr when Mike mm -hmm. was there. And Mike Mike didn't have a problem with that, did he? I don't, I don't want to see. You're not, you're, you're not setting me up to answer the right question. What do you mean, Phil? <laughs> set up a play for Steve Kerr. Well, what? Said, what? I don't, I don't want to see. You're not. You're, you're not what? When Mike mm -hmm. was there. And Mike, Mike didn't have a problem with I was in the locker room with him. I was in practice with him. Uh, you're looking for him afar. Yeah, and, and look, that's why I wanted to have you on. But I go back and Phil designed a play for Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr's white. Yeah. And it was it was championships, actually. Not even the Eastern Conference. The, the ultimate, the NBA Finals. Okay. And it was a very pivotal game. And they drew up the play. And Steve Kerr got the ball and hit the shot. Oh, as a player? I thought he was yeah. a coach. Well, he is a player, and then he became a coach. Okay. So the point that what he's saying is, okay, you're saying that that Phil is racist because he took Tony Kukoc over you, but then how comes he took Steve Kerr over Mike? And he says, well, uh, that's not the right question. <laughs> what do you mean it's not the right question? Well, what's happening is it completely destroys your argument because when it happened to Mike, and it's not the only time. I mean, Paxson hit... Hit a three. Oh, John Paxson? Yeah, yeah. Pa Paxson hit a very, very pivotal three in a, in a finals game. I mean, it's a team sport. <laughs> God almighty. And it's not racism. It's smart basketball. You made the right move, Scotty. When Mike was <clears> there. And Mike Mike didn't have a problem with that, did he? I don't, I don't want to see. You're not, you're, you're not setting me up to answer the right question. What do you mean, Phil? You're not setting me up to answer the right question. <laughs> Who are you to say that, Scotty? He's doing the interviews. He's the one that's got the uh, credentials. How are you going to tell him? It's a good... As a matter of fact, I'm surprised that he responded that way instead of sucking up to you, considering the environment we're in, yeah. subhanAllah. But good, kudos to Dan Patrick for standing up to Scotty. <sighs> Very uh, bizarre. It's it's strange, very very strange. And, and and look, this is this is right. Uh, J. L. Nixon says Scotty was an assistant in 05 with the Lakers under Phil. Why would he join <laughs> Phil if he was a racist? That's a good question. Interesting. Why are you working for the man when you know that he's this inveterate racist? Set up a play for Steve Kerr. He didn't set that play up for Steve Kerr. He set that play up for Michael Jordan. I thought in the huddle, Mike says, I'm going to throw you the ball. You'll be open at the felon. That, and Phil had nothing to do with it. And that's the other thing. Mike 
called that play. Mike called that play. You know why? Because he didn't care about hitting the shot. He just wanted to win. So he was watching the pattern. Every time he would come, they would double him and leave Kerr open. So he goes, look, the ball's coming to me. When they come to rush me, I'm going to pass the ball. You're going to be wide open, hit the shot. Yep. Very, very famous conversation. We saw it on the bench all night, all, whole nine yards. And, and now, but here's my point. If you were the type of player, and, and you know what's interesting? You remember when Kyrie, Kyrie hit that game-winning shot uh, against the, uh, the, the Warriors? It was a game seven, right? And there was oh, like there was like twenty five seconds. Ran back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where LeBron did that monster yeah, block. Yeah, then okay, Kyrie came over, that. hit a fadeaway three over Steph Curry, and they won the title. There is a video where there was a timeout call. They're drawing up a play. Tyloo's drawing up a play, and LeBron points to Kyrie and says, "Get him the shot." Okay. So it was the two black people, right? Well, yeah, yeah. But here, here's my point, Jordan pulls Kerr aside and says, they drew up the play for him. And then Jordan says, look, I'm going to pass you the ball when I'm doubled. My point is, the great players initiate that type of deference. A bad player needs a, co well, not a bad player, but a regular player needs a coach to say, no, this is a better basketball decision. So, LeBron always makes the best basketball decision. And late Jordan always made the best basketball decision. And so, that's, that's the situation. Now, you could say LeBron did that because he was afraid of taking the shot. I don't believe that to be true. I think LeBron did that. Le LeBron's got a higher clutch average than than Jordan. I mean, that's just a fact. But, you know, we're going to go back and forth all the time, Ryder, right? That's what makes it fun. But that's not racism. <laughs> Man, you don't want to get this show started because it'll take us a long time. Do you know all those cameras that's sitting in that huddle who they was working for? The NBA. So you know who Michael was speaking to when he said that. No, they weren't working for the NBA. They were working for Jordan. Right. That was that was planned. That was speaking to the to the camera. That wasn't speaking out of what we're gonna have to do, what the play is gonna be. That You said it was scripted? Yeah, because As remember if... that when Jordan said, Hey, they're gonna get get me the ball and then pass it to Steve? He said they like scripted it later or something. No, he's saying that they planned that. It's a ridiculous what? thing. It, it's completely insane because there's no way you can pre-plan a situation like that because there's way too many variables in the game. That play was drawn up when we saw it, Scotty. Like, and what you're saying is completely irrational. He he's saying, oh, that famous play, the whole thing was scripted. Word. For what reason? For uh, to make Michael look better, I guess. I don't Speaking know. to the camera. Had John had uh, John Stockton not came down, trust me. <laughs> but that was building his own doc. Yes, if John okay, so John Stockton left the double, you know, left to double team Jordan. He's saying if he didn't leave to double team Jordan, Jordan would have took the shot. Which is no what, dog. That's what the entire point of the play was. That's the entire point, Scotty. That's the point because Jordan is. Literally known universally as the best mid-range jump shooter of all time. So if he was on a one-on-one -on -one situation, then the best basketball play is to take that shot. But because he was double teamed and Kerr was hitting shots, then the best basketball play is to pass it to Steve Kerr. Yeah. Mentory, because he knew he was controlling the cameras. <laughs> what? You understand English? Yeah. You oh, understand okay. whoa, English? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did he just say, do you understand yeah. English? Yeah, I feel so bad for Scotty. I feel so bad for him. Cameras that was working were working basically for Michael Jordan. That's so strange. Not for the Chicago Bulls. But they were building the Come Fly With Me, the Air Jordan videos. That's what it was. It, that was not naturally spoken. Okay. Right. That was rehearsed. Okay. Rehearsed. Uh, rehearsed. I don't believe you. I don't believe they were rehearsed, Scotty. I truly don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe they were rehearsed. Because you cannot... That is a very, very, very specific situation. That they had to do over and over again is what he's saying? Yeah, he... You rehearsed know. means to do it over and over again. Yeah, and you cannot... How could... How... Scotty, how? 
Maybe they like. Had, How would like, they be uh, able to replicate that that in game situation? Ambiguous term, so then they could fill it in later in the game. Maybe right. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. I. I just. Uh. And really by the way, bad. I'm not a. I'm. I believe that LeBron has far superseded Michael Jordan as a player, so I'm not kissing his butt. However, he did make the right basketball play, and Scotty looks really horrible right now. Did you guys understand that he was doing a documentary that last year? We understood from Phil Jackson that the NBA wanted to do some behind the scene footage for the team so much documentary. Losses. That's what we was understood. That's what we were sold. But that wasn't how it all went and died. Hmm. Uh, disagree with Scotty, fine, but don't insult him. How, who's insulting him? I didn't insult him. I'm just saying that he's wrong here. Nobody, it's it's not an insult to a person to disagree with them. Secondly, he quit on his team, and that's anathema in team sports. I don't care what your your reasoning is. You quit on your team, Scotty. So there's that. Uh, you you just you uh, phased out a little bit there with your connection. So yeah, uh, oh. yeah, yeah. We're, I, I wasn't pausing. I was yeah, I wasn't pausing because I didn't understand what you were saying. Just wanted to let you know but you feel like like there's anger with you or <laughs> you think clarification or something. i don't know i'm trying to get a feel i for think this. it's more i think it's more clarification uh, whether it was in the documentary or that's 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 enough that's enough oh boy <sighs> um is yeah. he did he vote for trump <laughs> I, I i don't know he doesn't really speak on politics a lot uh so much time time with politics yeah, well, I mean, he wasn't even talking about politics. He was just talking about his experience with Phil. With Phil. Um, you got to feel for Scotty. Obviously, being in Jordan's shadow um, was, com was, was more hurtful to him than we realized. And then I think the documentary reopened some old wounds that he hasn't uh, dealt with. On top of that, if you're a Christian, pray for him because his son has recently died. Oh, really? His son had chronic asthma as a respiratory issue, and in the world of COVID, you know, it's pretty crazy. Um, and I feel, I feel like his emotional state is not where it needs to be. He's had some really painful personal issues in his life, and uh, all he, I, I feel, it, it looks to me like he feels incomplete because that one year that Jordan was gone he didn't get his opportunity to shine. So on a human on a human level, um, I feel really bad for him. Um, but when I think about the movement and what we're trying to do, that hurts us a bunch. Anytime you give Ben Shapiro and Tucker Carlson some fodder to use against what we're trying to accomplish with racial justice, it's a loss for us. And, and everybody's going to be picking up on this tomorrow. Everybody's going to do a segment on this. And all the right wingers are going to go, see? Because this is so obviously not a racist thing that Phil did. Especially considering the guy hit the shot. He hit the shot, Scotty. He hit it. And that should have been the end of yeah. the discussion for you. Yeah. He hit the shot. So... <sighs> I feel very heavy in my heart for Scotty. I th you know, it's just... That's a lot of pain to have to deal with. And it just goes to show you, man, it doesn't matter how much trillions of dollars you have. If you don't if you don't have that inner peace, um, you're going to get eaten alive. So there you go, dear listener. Having said that, love your neighbor. What was I supposed to say? Take care of each other. Take care of each other. Having said that, love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America. We are the media. Till next time, guys.